What is up, y'all? I'm Ben Jamming Outdoors, and this is my channel. Welcome back y'all. So today I'm actually installing a car stereo head unit in my truck. Now this is going to be a huge upgrade because what I have in my XLT F250 is just hella basic. I mean it's just, it's got Bluetooth and it's, I mean, I don't know if y'all are familiar but the sync systems in these trucks can sometimes really suck and I constantly have my voice command just, I actually haven't used my voice command in forever but my even my Bluetooth just sometimes just doesn't want to connect. So it's just really frustrating and when we take this 10,000 or more miles road trip around the US, I want to be able to really enjoy our driving experience. Now I can use a phone for GPS. I'm gonna have RAM mounts that I normally have on my bikes up on my dash to be able to hold the phones and stuff and along with the quad lock. But it's still, I mean, it's a small screen and it's gonna be pretty close to the window so it's just going to be hard to see, especially when we use like Onyx or the off-road apps. I want to be able to see in detail the maps that we're driving and stuff. So this is going to be a huge upgrade. It's like an Eonon or Enon or whatever, however you pronounce it. This brand apparently has been around forever. This is an Android Chinese radio. And I was really hesitant about buying one of these just because it's Chinese. I was going to go with a brand like Kenwood that we're all familiar with that you know is going to be a good product, but one of the criteria I was looking at was camera inputs. I wanted to have a rear camera like normal obviously, but then I wanted to have a front camera for like, you know, spotting basically so I can see where I'm going when I'm off-roading. I don't want to always have to get out of the vehicle or Morgan get out of the vehicle to be able to spot me. Obviously it wouldn't be as effective as having an actual spotter, but it's still a feature that I wanted. And most of the units that I was looking at, like Kenwood and Pioneer, that had it were, you know, $400 or $500 at the minimum. Some of those in that price range didn't even have it. So, I mean, you're looking at over $500, bucks, and then most of those didn't even have the wireless Apple CarPlay either. So you had to plug it in. So, really, you didn't get a whole lot for that $500. Bucks. So I kind of thought about it for a few weeks. And I install a lot of these at my job. Now, not so much this brand, but just the Chinese dash kits in general for like the Jeep Wranglers and stuff. Some of them are kind of crappy. I don't like some features, but this one has been around for a while, like 20 years, I think, around that. And so I did some research, and this is one of the main Chinese brands that is a good radio. Now, they use all the same screens, apparently, just because they fit these different dash kits. And so you can basically, you know, they can make to the dash kits basically for all the Chinese ones, supposedly. But anyway, I'm super excited for this because I, I decided to break down and get this one just because I got this thing for 300 bucks. I think I actually used like a discount code like Toys10. It's one of another YouTubers. So I got 10 bucks off on top of like a $10 off sale already. So I got this radio for $300 with the camera. So incredible deal and I got the I got the UA 12s plus 6g so this is basically one of the best units that they make right now one of the best performing this has the six gigabytes of RAM so it's supposed to be the fastest so this is one of their better units it's a Android 12 so it's newer so it should be better for longer um, I'm pretty excited for it I mean it's a big screen it's actually adjustable so let's go ahead and start breaking into it and I'll show y'all. So first off, the packaging is pretty nice, honestly. I mean, it's nice thick cardboard. The, you know, the packaging itself, I mean, it looks really nice. It's even got raised lettering. Got manual package of stuff. And even this, you know, plastic Ziploc bag is actually like a nice soft material soft plastic. I mean it, it's actually pretty nice to be honest Antennas Cheap. 
I haven't seen a, no, there's a GPS antenna. I don't know what these are. What the heck? Absolutely no clue what these strips are. Uh, USB mic. Only one USB? Interesting. The actual unit. I have already torn into this, so some of this stuff's actually already been looked at, but. Oh, there's, yeah, there's more USBs. I think there's actually three USBs. Let's see. And one thing that's neat about this thing is I'm pretty sure if you put a SIM card in this thing, um, is it can get phone signal. So there's like the actual SIM card. So I believe it can get its own signal from, you know, towers. So basically it can be its own phone, which I would never do, but it's still nice to have that option. Backup camera input. I'm curious where the, where the uh, front camera input is. Probably it's in this one. Cause I'm, I know it has a front camera. Audio, probably this one right here. Yeah, front camera input. So it's got two camera inputs. That was a huge plus. That's what I wanted. This unit actually has wireless Apple CarPlay, wired CarPlay, mirroring, Bluetooth of course. Um, I think, obviously it's got, it's an Android so it can do, you know, get apps, it can do all those same things. So anyway, it, I mean, it does basically, it does literally everything that you would want it to do. And one reason I went with this unit was because it was flexible. It was adjustable and my dash is not made to be able to have a screen of this size. So this actually pops off the main unit and this actually swivels. It can go up and down, angle different ways. It, can, it actually can you know, adjust up and down a good bit. So if you got like air conditioning controls down here and you wanna have the screen higher, you can adjust it up. So it's actually got a locking mechanism back here that makes it adjustable basically. And then this obviously swivels. Um, and, and there's the GPS, you put your GPS uh, SIM card in there or whatever. But yeah, I mean, this thing is probably the most versatile one that I could find. All the other ones were like, all the tech was on the back of the screen. Um, that's what I've installed in a lot of Jeeps is it has the plugins directly on the back. It doesn't have this doubled in unit that plugs into a screen. I kind of like this setup because, well, it's actually gonna be easy for me to install. I just unplugged this and I had to get the double den unit. So I can install this like my normal double den that's in my truck already. And then you just gotta pop the screen on. So it's probably one of the better options, especially more affordable options for like my truck. I do think they make some like full dash kits that are come like with an iPad on it or something like that, you know, something crazy like the Tesla Dash. But I think they're like eight or nine hundred dollars or more or something I'm close to a thousand, I think. So this is just a really good option if you want a large screen in like my truck or a truck that's similar. My dad and my father-in-law both have the same F-250 that I have, except in a higher trim level. So they already have the better, taller dash that has the screen and the backup camera and all that stuff. So if you have like an XLT or an XL, this is the cheapest way to be able to get anywhere near that level, uh, especially with, without spending the same amount that they spent on the truck. You're always gonna pay for the higher trim levels. So if you don't want to, you can do a few upgrades like this, which my dad's can't do anything near what this thing can do. This thing is like the most capable, <laughs> radio on the planet it seems like i mean again it's like a straight up phone it's like a tablet you can do basically anything on it you can download any apps on it i've even seen people play video games on this thing which is crazy but i, I guess you can do it watch movies anyway i'm going to take the adapter for my truck this plugs into the oem harness and then i'm going to cut this one because that plug won't plug into here and i'm going to wire these up I'm gonna verify colors and everything, make sure they're all good. But I'm just gonna do some butt connectors instead of soldering anything, because there's no need for it. I'm going to start popping everything apart. I'm 
double dash out. Get rid of that crap. This pack, LP7, I'm not gonna need this anymore because it converts just, you know, speaker wires into RCA cables. This radio comes with stuff that I can plug my RCA cables into, so don't need this anymore. And I can disconnect all the wires that I tapped into too. So I got the dash part, got the old radio out. Now I just have to tie this that goes into the radio into the adapter but I need to look up a wiring diagram on the truck just to verify what wires go where. Because on this one, these four tiny wires, those don't go to anything on the truck. And there is one that's right here on the actual truck. So I need to probably move one of these wires into that spot. This looks like a power wire, this looks like a ground. I don't see a accessory power wire or like a um, key on. The key on might be this one. I don't know. These all look like speaker wires. So I don't know. I got to look it up. I just want to verify before I do anything. Another thing on these brackets is there's a bunch of unused tabs. So these have to come off because those sit up against the radio. And then there's also a ton of tabs that you don't need. So you kind of just go to the figure. This one's for 2009 to 15 Super Duty. And I'm pretty sure, obviously mine's a 16, um, but 17 is when they change, so this will work for mine too. Basically, you remove all the shaded ones. All right, that's what it looks like. And you can tell this thing is significantly smaller. I mean, you put that thing on the face of it, look how much further that sticks out, the OEM one. I don't know if it's the dash or what. I don't know if it's the radio that's kind of keeping it from going in or not. I don't know. So I figured out you do need to lop off this little ear because in here, these things actually hit them. It goes on there pretty nice. Looks great. It's gonna look even better with the screen on there, obviously, but I actually temporarily fitted the screen on there and man, it it is perfect. So as you can see right there, I think that white and purple line goes in and then that red comes out the same spot. So I got my tester on it. So we're gonna see, turn the key, get the light, there we go. Nothing. So that is not key on. Now let's see if this is constant power. Yes, that yellow is constant power. So we just gotta go through here and figure out which one is key on. For the life of me, I can't find the accessory wire that I hooked this up to because it was working. Every time they turn the key off, this would turn off. But there is a power delay. Um, I was watching another YouTube video and the guy was talking about how, you know, the radio will stay on until you open up your doors after you turn your vehicle off. Um, even if you turn the key off in the total resting position, it'll still stay on for a little bit until you open your doors. And if I wire it directly to a key on, then anytime I turn the key off, the radio is going to turn off. So I'm actually going to tie into that um, power delay wire, basically. Um, the guy actually went down here and found it up in there. And so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to find that, tie it in, bring it up here, and then we're going to have the radio be able to stay on until you open your doors. So that's gonna be kind of nice. So I pulled the plug off the side of the fuse box up in there. Basically just gotta push that and then lift up at the same time and wiggle this thing out. And you gotta cut back the electrical tape a little bit 
and then you can find the green slash teal with a purple line and I just shaved off a little bit just cut off the the coating and then basically opened up the center of the wire and shoved a black one through it and then wrapped it around so once I solder this is gonna be really solid for for many years to come then I'm gonna cut off excess and run it up you know where it looks really good up in there basically all the way up through there to the accessory power on the actual radio wire and that's what it looks like so I'm gonna wrap that up with electrical tape and then we're gonna plug it back in and test it out see if that is in fact the wire all right so we got it hooked up turn the key 12 volts basically key off power still on I'm about to open up a door nice and for the mic I'm gonna put it right here at the top of this trim on the a pillar I just shoved the radio side down at the bottom of the a pillar and I'm basically gonna just tuck it up I want to show y'all how dumb I was so I installed this is base knob a while back and I thought that I had an issue I mean I, I was I thought I needed a male male to be able to make this work male male RCA adapter um, and so I got it and put it together and taped it up and this was in the dash this goes to itself like those are taped up they go to their self input output like are you kidding me was I that stupid so we got the radio back in ready for another test I got all the speakers hooked up and I got the radio hooked up as well the radio antenna so hopefully I'll be able to get some sound out of it make sure it works and I think it just takes so long to power up the first time because it is taking a good bit of time let's see let's turn off the vehicle first and just see shuts off obviously because the doors are open let's give it a give it a second it's been about a minute so let's see what happens wow powers right on that's nice so let's go to radio <laughs> Even says what's playing. It's playing over there. It's playing over there. Yeah. So all of the actual speaker wires are hooked up correctly because it's going in the direction that it's supposed to. So all four corners were correct. So that is good. So all the speakers are hooked up correctly so I can shrink wrap those. And then I just gotta figure out the RCA cables. And then I gotta run a backup camera up through here so when I put all this back together I can obviously not have to tear this back apart at least until I get the front camera so I'm gonna go through here and show you what I did I actually just matched the colors the colors actually worked um, as they should have I don't think that I had to move anything I moved that red wire but it didn't do anything so um, all the colors looked good and I already tested it so everything worked and these butt connectors obviously after I crimped them I tugged on them make sure they were good but once you heat this and this heat shrink you know it actually has glue inside of it too to make it like waterproof once that you know melts it honestly holds it together really well too 
I mean, it keeps water out, but it also just does a really good job at holding these wires together. So even if you didn't do the best crimping job, as long as it's, you know, pretty tight, the glue will hold it together for many years. Um, I put a spade connector on the 12 volt accessory power, and then as well as the uh, reverse trigger. So the reverse trigger I got right here, and I put a spade connector on it too. And there's the input for the camera. And make sure you tape everything, because the last thing you want to happen is obviously your backup camera go out or a sub go out because these RCA cables just got disconnected. I don't think any of that gets wired to anything right now. So that reverse trigger that I'm gonna hook in, at the, on the other side, I'm gonna hook it into the reverse light. So it's gonna send power to here as well as the camera, it's gonna turn the camera on and then this is going to send a signal to the radio to let it know it's in reverse. I got an RCA adapter. So this is the subwoofer out right here. I did a splitter so I can connect it to my base knob and then have it run to the sub. I could have probably put it on like, you know, the speaker RCA cables, but just for adjustability on the radio, I want to make sure the subwoofer is accurate, saying when you adjust the subwoofer, it actually adjusts the actual subwoofer one. So that's why I got that. It was like six bucks at AutoZone. I got the, the mic coming down, zip tied to some bracketry, as well as the backup camera. I don't want any of this stuff to fall back down. The 4G antennas, both of them, I don't need them. So I actually zip tied them up in here because if, if not, I'm gonna lose them. So I'll have those back up in there if I ever need them. I just gotta run the GPS antenna somehow up here. And then I gotta run the USBs wherever I want them. I got three USBs. Let's go ahead and finish this up, get the USBs ran and then plug everything in and get this baby in here. So I had to temporarily hook up the subsystem so I could make sure everything's right. And these actually got mixed up. And so I kind of had to guess, but I think it's good. I just got to probably test the backup camera real quick. Other than that, I think everything is good to go. Some of the sub wire harnesses, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Unit is pretty solid in there. AC. Upfitter switches, brake controller, traction control, or advanced track, all that kind of crap. 4x4, one of the most important things. Dang! It looks clean. Got the exhaust brake and the power outlet over here. The sink stuff that I can't use right now because I didn't get adapters. So that's gonna just be visual for right now. Now we're gonna put the screen on. Make sure it's clean. I'm gonna put this bracket that covers it. That protects unwanted, I guess, movement of the plug. Snug it up, don't strip it. Now, slide it on. Man, that thing is killer. And you can adjust it up and down like it can lock all the way up there or it can lock all the way down here, but that covers up my AC and it's pretty sturdy. I mean, yeah, it'll probably shake when I'm going off road a little bit, but man, that looks good. It boots up like super quick, like watch this. Boom. I mean, that's awesome. And it helps that it's six gigabytes of RAM. So, I mean, it's just, it's just laser fast. And I mean, it doesn't block my vents unless I guess theoretically you're blowing it towards somebody sitting in this seat or over here. Like I can't use this vent to blow at me now cause it's gonna blow on the back of the unit. But other than that, I mean, it doesn't block anything. And I just have to figure out what launcher I want like something like this. This is a demo. It, I didn't pay for it, so it'll it'll give a basically like a demo pop up, 
and you know if I want to actually use this as my launcher I'm gonna have to actually like buy it but it's not a big deal see unlock theme it's on demo mode which is not a big deal if I can find what I want I'll just buy it you know five six bucks ain't a big deal also I did get a OBD reader and it came in today so I can actually use the torque function so I'm gonna go get it I'm gonna put it in the OBD reader and we can actually read the codes and look at live data so here's the OBD reader. You can actually get these with the units, but this one was like $5 on eBay. Plug it in, turn the key. Maybe it's the Bluetooth app. Oh, here we go, okay. Oh, there we go. I guess you hit the search. So I guess we're good. Bluetooth, yeah, so it's paired. Go home. All right. feature works so that's pretty cool so I've had the radio installed for a few days now and as you can see I haven't even taken the film that's on the front of the screen off and I already have some issues with it so yesterday when I did my tires it was early in the morning I realized that these buttons do not light up which really sucks because you know you have to actually touch on the actual screen if you want to raise the volume and stuff unless you can remember basically by you know memory like happen to hit the volume up because I don't have a CAN bus system for my steering wheel controls, which I might want to do in the future. But anyway, that kind of sucks. And then yesterday, I turned the truck on. Nothing happened. So actually, when I turned the key initially, it basically like rebooted entirely. Like, so it goes to the, like does the Enon um, logo and then Android powering on it, it took like 30 seconds Normally if there's already power to it, it'll just boot right up basically immediately like one or two seconds So it basically to me means that there's a bad connection on the power or something shorted out inside or a fuse blue and then because the, the time after that I turned it back on and it didn't turn on at all So I'm worried that it was faulty wiring. Hopefully it's just faulty wiring. Hopefully it's not the radio's fault um, maybe I'm, I'm hoping that I didn't get a bad unit, but if I did, I'm hoping they warranty it because I've had it for like three days and that would really suck. And that's kind of why I'm getting this radio early on. So obviously before the trip, I can work out all the kinks, make sure it's a good radio and I don't have issues while we're out there. So anyway, let me go ahead and disassemble everything so I can try to pull it out and see what's going on. It seemed to be just the actual main plug on the back was just not connected well. So I may have to try to bend some of those tabs in the actual plug so they get a better connection. And I might even contact Eonon to try to see what they will do for me because this is really frustrating. Maybe they'll give me a you know partial refund. Maybe they'll give me another wiring harness. I don't know. Maybe they won't do anything. Who knows? But um, it is a little frustrating and I'm hoping I can kind of figure this thing out. So when we're balancing off road while we're overlanding, we're not going to have the radio go out or our, you know, GPS go out or something, you know, cause this is, this is really frustrating. Now I love the unit itself, but I definitely don't want it to keep on going out on me. But anyway, let's see if we can bend some of those tabs just a hair to be able to get a better contact. And then we'll put it back together. So I bent the tabs on the power and the ground wire a little bit more. So it was just, uh, there's a tab that basically bent down and, and I just pulled it down a little bit more. So hopefully there's a little more tension on it when it hits one of those prongs. But hopefully I don't have this issue again. Nice. Hopefully I won't have to pull this thing back apart for a while, if ever. Yikes. Now it's freezing up. What the heck? Are you kidding me? Does it seriously just go out again? I 
Oh my gosh. What the heck though? This is so stupid. <laughs> so the connectors in here are just so flimsy. So there's one that kind of bends down and so basically when you plug it in, it's supposed to like, I guess, push it up and basically contact it. And uh, the thing just bent up super easy. That might have been the reason. So I bent it down and put a tiny shard of metal from, actually, I was drilling some metal the other day. So I had some like the spirals that come off when you drill in some metal. So I just cut up one of those and just put a tiny shard in each ground and positive. And so hopefully they only flex up so much and uh, it gives itself a really good ground and positive. Um, Hopefully that's going to fix the issue, but I'm definitely going to contact them because I mean, I like the radio, but I think this cheap connector is really screwing me up. I mean, if this could be better, I, I don't think I'd have an issue. So I pulled my dash apart again because I put my OEM radio in for the trip to Alabama slash the Smokies and I got the harness out. So I have to basically rework this harness because that plug failed on me and I ended up breaking it trying to modify it so it would not cut out on me. So Eonon sent me another one. Hopefully I don't have a failure with this one. I'm probably going to end up super gluing this thing in or something and then zip tying it to the back. Maybe like zip tying it to the plastic right there so it physically cannot move or something. I don't know because I'm just fed up with uh, having this issue. I love the radio itself and it works in every way that I would like it to, but this cutting out just has to stop. So I'm going to snip all these wires and then basically wired into that and hopefully we will not have another issue for the life of this radio, but I guess we'll see. So I zip tied the new wiring harness to the side of the plastic and then I also put right stuff in between the plug and the actual unit. So once that hardens, this thing will not move inside of that plug. So hopefully this will solve the issue and I guess we'll see. All right, so it's powering on. All right. That's good. Rear camera. I think everything's good. I'm not gonna mess with anything because that right stuff is still drying, but I am definitely um, going to test it out once it dries, make sure there's no issues, try to wiggle it around back there, and then hopefully we're good. I mean, hopefully this is the last time I have to take this thing apart. So it's been a few weeks since I installed the radio, and it's been doing good for the most part. Obviously, I've had some hiccups. They sent me a new wiring harness, and it has blacked out one time since I've replaced the radio. So... I, I don't know if, you know, I guess the wiring harness didn't fix the issue entirely. But the first time it blacked out, these were never being illuminated. So I thought it was blacked out entirely. But after I figured out the issue with the lights, um, I actually had to change a setting for those to come on with the key on. If you didn't have that setting on, it was requiring you to wire it up to, you know, basically your headlight switch. And I didn't do that, so that's why they weren't coming on. So I had to change the setting to any time you turn the key on, those will come on. Then, after the times it was blacking out, these lights were still on. So it was still getting power. So I don't really get what was going on per se, because this last time I actually just held down the reset for like, again, seven seconds or so, and it rebooted. So that's probably what I'm going to do from now on. I don't know if there's an actual issue with it or if it's just some weird quirk with this radio. But other than that, it's been pretty great. Let's turn it on. I mean, everything works great. I mean, I have no issues at all. Um, again, it hasn't frozen up yet. 
Hopefully it won't do it. It's only blacked out one time since I put the sealant around the plug and zip tied the plug out of the way. But, I mean, it's been good. Honestly, for 300 bucks, I would do it again. And, I mean, if you can try to work out all the quirks, I mean, if you don't know how to work on this stuff, I wouldn't recommend getting one because you'll probably have to take it back to the person who ever did it. Um, it's, you know, you kind of have to know what you're doing to be able to problem solve if there is an issue. But, you know, if you can install it and you can figure out those issues, it it's awesome. I mean, for 300 bucks, I am very, very, very happy with it. So I'm gonna take the truck for a short ride, show you how the radio works. There it is. I also got a new camera. I'm not gonna show it to y'all right now, but it is sick. I also am currently wiring up a new addition to the truck. This is a Wolfbox dash cam mirror setup. So I need to run the rear camera so it can do all time rear because I can't see jack squat out the back. Those are my super bright LEDs inside of my house. And I mean, you can only see the sun out the back. Basically, it's like way too dark. So this will allow me to be able to actually use the function uh, again of my mirror. I can actually see what's going on behind me without looking in my side mirrors. Um, and obviously, because if I look out back, I can't see nothing. So it gives me that opportunity again. And also it records front and back at the same time. It's pretty sweet. But anyway, let's get back to the actual radio. And it automatically connects. When you start it, it kind of has to shut off and cut back on, unfortunately. But it's so fast, it doesn't matter. And I got my quad lock up here. Freaking love the quad lock. One of my best bike purchases. Oh, let's see. Sometimes I can hit it. There we go. There we go. It's awesome. So I currently have Onyx displaying on here, but you can also use Maps or probably Google Maps as well. But I got radio. This is Apple CarPlay going off my phone. And there's my dash cam. So I can basically, you know, do anything. It is, it is very nice. And this is really the main reason I wanted to have this thing was to see Onyx while we're traveling off-road because otherwise I'd have to use, you know, the phone like this. And it's just harder to see that compared to that. It's a lot bigger. Plus you can, you know, make that even larger. Just so nice. And between that and that, it's gonna look like, you know, I'm driving some brand new truck. It's gonna be a really nice addition. I think that was a little bit over $100. That's with the extension kit for the rear camera because my truck's so long. So I actually got an open box for 100 bucks and then $20 for the extension. So not too bad. I think this normally goes for 150. And then obviously I got this for 300. And I think I had to spend 20 bucks or so or on something else of the dash kit and stuff. So I'm in about like 320 for this. But in between these things, it was about 500 bucks, but I think it's gonna drastically increase my experience inside my vehicle and just overall better to drive because I'll be able to see out the back as well as have video out the front and back for safety purposes. You know, if somebody tries to cut me off or, you know, for whatever, you know, any reason. Um, this is 4K, the front, the back is 1080p. Um, I think the upgraded version, I could have got 2.7 out the back, but doesn't matter. This thing, obviously, I don't know what this display is, but it's, you know, more than good enough but obviously you know i can go here go to the apps i can go to regular maps it's just super nice soon we'll be all the way out here in this part of the world which i'm super excited for i gotta say the quality of this camera is wild i'm super excited for the future with this thing i got a lot of lenses now, Morgan and I did spend a fortune on this thing, like five, six times the price of my camera. So, and mine wasn't cheap. So, you know, we gotta take care of it, but it's gonna improve the quality of our videos, I think, tenfold. So I'm super, super excited. Like, there's hardly any light in here right now. And 
there's so much light on my face. I guess it's coming from the radio and stuff, but whew, this quality is insane. But I'm super excited to learn how to shoot on this thing. Um, this thing's like a professional setup. We got a professional videographer buddy that is actually in the market for one of these. So if a professional is looking for a camera like this, then I think that we made a good purchase. So anyway, until next time, catch you on the flip side.